So last week we talked about Palm Sunday and what it meant. Jesus enters Jerusalem as king and people are giving him praise and honor and glory. But the cool thing about Jesus, our king, is that he humbles himself. He becomes a servant. And it says in the Bible that he comes to serve and not to be served. So Jesus, he serves and he loves, but he does this all the way up to his final days, even at the time of his last supper. He's with his disciples. And what he does is that he gets on his knees and he washes his disciples' feet. So Jesus continued to love and serve. Now that is a king that deserves all praise. Did someone say king? Oh, uh, king, seriously, are we going through this again? I'm talking about Jesus, our king. Tempa, tempa, Matt. So, sorry, sorry, I'm really sorry. Um, oh, by the way, uh, how did that serving go last week? You know, your week of serving? Well, after being raised in cardboard royalty, it was, it was not very easy for me to suddenly become a servant. It was actually very difficult to just always put other people first. Okay, well, give me some examples. Like, what happened? Well, I tried to cook a meal for my cooks one night, you know, just to give them the night off. And they just got angry because the kitchen was left in a complete mess. And then I gave out the clothes I don't wear anymore to some needy peasants. But they looked at me like I was crazy. They didn't even thank me. There was a homeless man right outside of my palace. And I had my best carpenters build him a shack. He seemed grateful, but then he wanted indoor plumbing as well. Couldn't he just be happy with a roof over his head? Everyone just seems to want more and more and more. And I found that the more I served others, the less they respected and feared me as their leader. You see, this whole serving thing is just not for everyone. Oh, at least not for me. Wow, that does sound pretty difficult and you really stepped it up this week. You know what, I'm proud of you, King. Good job. Uh, but it sounds like you just did these things just to complete a challenge, just to accomplish them, which you did, but did you do them in love? Love? Are you talking about that, that mushy gushy stuff that I have with my queen? Matt, I am a king, but I am no Prince Charming. No, God's love. It's a big love. Oh, so you mean like how I love pizza? That's a big love. Or, or how I love ice cream, especially chocolate with sprinkles and... Oh, and cherry limeades from Sonics? Ah, oh, those are delicious. No, 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 no. Not that kind of love. Not the kind of love that Prince Charming feels towards Cinderella or that you feel towards your favorite treats. I'm talking about a selfless love, God's love, a love that surpasses all understanding, the greatest love ever known. Remember, King, we told you last week that Jesus served and loved up to his final days. You see, part of the reason he was so good at serving everyone is because he truly loved them. He wanted to do good things for them, not to accomplish a challenge, but if it makes you feel any better, even though he always served and loved, and wanted nothing in return, he was still treated poorly by many people as well. You see, people back then made up rumors about Jesus and were rude and disrespectful towards him, despite the fact he never did anything wrong to anyone. Wow, wait, wait, why would they be so mean to someone so good? Well, a lot of people were intimidated by Jesus. They didn't understand why he was being so nice to everyone and he claimed to be the son of God, which they especially didn't like. But I thought that you said he was the son of God. He was and is, but people didn't believe him. They didn't see why the son of God would be so nice to others and choose to serve others instead of using his powers for selfish reasons. Well, but what did he do about that? Well, that's the crazy part. He never treated them poorly, regardless of how bad they treated him. You see, he ultimately came here for a reason. It was to serve and love. But it was also to pay the price for all of us forever. What price? I don't need anyone to pay any prices for me. I'm king. I'm rich. I can pay for anything. All this cardboard money that I have. King, but you can't pay for this. I can pay for anything. 
You name the price and I can buy it. Not this, King. You see, this was not an item you can buy. This was the price for our sin. Sin? What? What is this sin? Is, is that some kind of weapon that replicates the strength of a man and the venom of a snake? I haven't heard of this so-called sin that I can't afford. No, it's everything we've ever done wrong. You see, anytime you ever lied or cheated or even thought a bad thought about someone, you distance yourself from God because he is perfect and can't be around imperfection. Over time, as you sin more and more and more, you created quite a gap between yourself and God. Ultimately, we all want to live eternally with God, but because of sin, we can't. You see, the Bible says that the punishment for sin is death. This is the kind of death that leads to eternity without Jesus. It's a very sad death. One, no one would ever choose for themselves or anyone. Oh no, I, I think I may have stolen a few extra cookies from the cookie jar when, when I was a wee little prince, but does this mean I'm going to live forever without God? Well, it would mean that sadly, but fortunately, there's good news. You see, Jesus not only served, but he filled in the gap with his love. How, how did he fill this gap? What does love have to do with any of this? I feel like I have so many important questions that I need answering. I mean, this is my eternity we're talking about. This king is like no man I have ever heard of. 